connectivity is a hard thing to quantify in sports. Team sports in particular are very much an organic living thing. It can vary day to day, week to week, month to month. I look at the four teams right now in the conference finals, and I think three of them have connectivity. And Boston, for half a season, three quarters of a season, I felt like had connectivity. They hit a rough stretch there sometime after the All-Star break for a few weeks, where I didn't feel it. At no point in time during the playoffs have I felt that from them. I think about Miami, who didn't have connectivity for much of the season. It wasn't until around March 1st that they started playing well. Hell, we're fucking 13 months removed from Jimmy Butler and Eric Spolster trying to fight each other on the bench, right? Yeah. Uh, the Lakers, to start the year, no just connectivity, no, no, none of that organic chemistry that is required to win at the highest level. Now, all of a sudden, they have that. Denver probably has been the most consistent with that. Um, although, you know, like I said, they kind of punted on a couple weeks there in the regular season but that was because they had pretty much locked up the number one seed. And the reason I bring this up is because connectivity manifests, manifests itself on the basketball floor. It manifests itself in rotations, in trust, in making the extra pass. I think about there's a possession last night in the Boston-Miami game. It's 56-35 in the second quarter. Jalen Brown's got the ball on the right wing. He's about 29 feet away from the basket. Butler's playing off of him a little bit. And Jason Tatum comes off a wide pin down. Jalen Brown looks at him and then turns and just jacks up a 29-footer and misses. And we'll get to Jalen Brown's shooting numbers. Just a great example of just, like, trust. No, I'm going to do it myself. You know, I, I think about some of the teams that I've played on over the years that try to, you know, you get down. It's like, well, I'm going to do it myself. And that's just not how basketball works. And the thing with connectivity is that it actually makes, not only does it make your team better, but it makes you better as a player. I think the Miami Heat in particular have been a great example of that in the playoffs. You have guys outperforming expectations. Isn't it ironic? You would argue probably over the last couple of years, the Celtics were the team that probably had the most connectivity. We've talked about their connectivity on defense, and their ability to switch. But even just the way they play and the way they, you know, the way they swing the ball when their offense is really humming. So I guess that it, it's kind of interesting to think about how connectivity can just turn on and off depending on, and we, we don't know what's going on, you know, yeah. in the locker room or anything like that. But in terms of, like, if you were to say before, not even before the season, if you were to say in uh, end of March, early April, which of these four teams are going to be the most connected, I think Boston would have been a pretty safe bet. Yeah, but I, I will say this. All the concerns that we had about Boston, you know, the late game execution, uh, the slippage in defense, I know they were the number two defense. You can't tell me in watching them this season that they were as good defensively as they were for the last 40 games last season. They just yeah. weren't. Um, they weren't, you, you know, that's what I mean by how it manifests itself. Like there's a play yesterday where Jimmy Butler, you know, he does such a good job game to game of just taking what the defense gives him, recognizing the double teams like last night, just making plays out of that, recognizing when it's time to score, recognizing matchups. So he had success in game three against Grant Wood or game two against Grant Williams Game three, it was Derek White. Boston easily just gives up a switch. He's got Derek White ISO'd. Literally takes two dribbles from the top of the key, beats Derek White, and it's just like matador defense at the rim. Like, the rotations have been off for Boston for much of the season. We haven't seen the same level of aggression in rotations from them. And again, it's Part of the reason the Miami Heat are shooting 48% from three. Yes, they're making yeah. shots. And I, I think some of that, we, I want to point this out now because I brought it up, but I think some of the NBA, and this is just truthfully, it's just a make or miss league. It, it really is. You look at Boston right now, regular season, they shot almost 43 attempts. Second in the league, they were second in makes. They were sixth in three-point percentage. They're down to 35.3 attempts this series and shooting 29%. The Heat, on the other hand, not a high volume of threes, just 30.7 attempts, but they're shooting 47.8% from three. 
So you're going to have variants to that night to night, but I, 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 I have to think the connectivity plays into all of this, right? Yeah. It, it just does. And you, you this is not, to, I'm not going to shit on Joe Missoula because again, I, I think he's done a good job this season. There's no question. And he's a rookie head coach. Doesn't have a deep assistant coaching staff. This is his first time through going into the playoffs, going through the playoffs. And he's like, he's learning on the job. And that's, that's a hard thing to do. But you see his post-game, you know, uh, post-game comments about how he's got to be better. He's got to figure out how to get his guys the right mentality. He's got to figure out ways to put him in the right position. It's like, we're, we're now going into game four of the Eastern Conference yeah, Finals. It's a, it's a little late. It's a, yeah, it's tough. One question about game two before we get to some of the stuff from last night. Um, in, the, in the fourth quarter, should they have blitzed Jimmy more? Yeah, um, I think he was prepared for it in game three because they did double him more in game three. Um, I, my, my thinking on any star player is you can't give them one look over and over again and you have to figure out ways to make them uncomfortable. Now, guys like Jimmy, um, I said this the other day about Nikola Jokic, uh, LeBron, I mean, most of the star players, most of the best players in the world, they all have a supercomputer in their brain and they're smart enough to figure it out. But by giving them the same look over and over, you make it a little bit easier. And <laughs> again, we've seen Jimmy do this a number of times during this playoff run. I, I think you have to be willing to live at times with other guys, uh, you know, beating you. Uh, the one guy I want to highlight, by the way, this is just like an X and O thing. And you know, they, they do run this stuff a lot, but I noticed last night, like in the non Jimmy minutes, there was a lot of this is them playing through bam. And it's very similar to the golden state split action where they post bam from the mid post. It's not a deep catch. And then they get into the movement. You see Duncan get a back cut layup. You see a guy come off dribble handoff three, maybe come off dribble handoff. The big runs up. Now you got a pocket pass to bam. Now he's making plays. It's one of the hardest actions to guard. Um, I think they call it X one when they run it. Sometimes they run it out of pistol action. Um, but I, we used to when we used to scout it, uh, we would call it gaggle. You know, just gaggle action. They put three guys together. Somebody cuts. Somebody back screen. Somebody runs to the ball. Um, and if you're switching that, it requires what's the c word? Connectivity. Connectivity. Yep. Boom. And that's where I think Boston just doesn't have it right now. Do you think that they were just? I'm thinking back up to the Milwaukee series. Um, was he? Were they? Were, have they been running this all playoffs, or do you feel like this is a wrinkle that they've thrown in? Um, just in this. In the last no, they've game? they've ran it for years. I mean, they they've, but, but they've ran term, that. For but in years. terms of him, like the playmaking from the high post, like it feels like it feels like it's been. There's been more of an emphasis on this. I don't know if it started in the in the Knicks series. I mean, it, it just felt like the Milwaukee series. Their strategy was different, even with Jimmy. Than what they're doing now. I mean, I think some of it though is some of it is more Duncan minutes. Yeah. So it's when Bam and Duncan are together. That was the that was a lot of what got Duncan off. You know, early in his career was the two man action with Bam. with Bam. So if now Duncan's playing more minutes, it's natural that you're going to go to that because that highlights two things that two guys on the court do really well. Yeah. Have you you talked about their the, the heat three point shooting earlier? Have they were 27th in the regular season. Um, and we talked about it a ton during the regular season about they just could ne they could never find it. Have you ever seen a jump like this? Well, we did discuss this because they did hit a six week stress stretch in March, uh, March into April where they shot it better. And Sp when I asked, I asked Spo about the three point shooting various variants. I didn't even, well, I wasn't even talking about the regular season when I asked him about this uh, before game six. I was more just saying, series to series, game to game, and how much that sort of matters in, you know, in terms of his game plan and coaching philosophy. And he pointed out to me, he's like, look, offensively, we were really good the last two months of the season. We shot it well. Um, I don't think it's a surprise that we've done this in the playoffs. And, and given the caliber of shooters they have, like I, I'm not surprised either. Uh, the, one, the one thing that was interesting is he just was like, I don't care about the variance. 
I want to get as many threes up as possible. I trust our shooters. I keep telling these guys when they have an off shooting night or an off shooting stretch, like the floodgates will open. It, yeah. it goes back to what makes them so great. It's just like, no, this is how we want to play. I recognize your strengths. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get caught up in you having a two for nine game. Like just fucking take the next shot. You know yeah. what I mean? I thought one, one crazy stat, Gabe Vincent, 10 of 18, three point shooting in the conference finals, uh, Tatum and Jalen combined seven to 40. It's kind of the, Tells the series in a nutshell. Yeah, and it goes back to another point I wanted to make just about this in general. Um, you can afford, you can afford, when you have a deep team, you can afford a few of the role guys to have off nights. In in this series, Smart Hartford Brogdon, not particularly good. In this series, Robert Williams III, Derek White, Grant Williams, they've been, I think, overall pretty good in terms of shooting the basketball, making plays, all that stuff. Grant Williams has played his ass off. Um, you can afford, you don't need all six guys to play well. You need a couple of them to play well, as we've seen with the Heat. Um, it, you can't afford to have your two best players not play well, and which is what happened last night. And a, a great example of that is the, the Philly series. You know, if, if, if one of those guys has a good game six, it's probably 4-2 Philly. Now, they both and Tatum was amazing, so I don't know that it would have mattered in Game 7, but they both weren't good in Game 7. It's very hard to win in the playoffs if your two best players are not playing well. Yeah. Last thing I want to say on connectivity. Last thing I want to say. Another manifestation is the ability to not let go of the rope when you're down. If that makes sense. Because Not let, the, not not let go of the rope. Blown out. No, just not let go of the rope. Meaning like the heat they're six and two when trailing by double digits in this playoff run. They've come back down twice in this series, games one and two, from being down 12 in the second half. That's the trust, right? That's, I'm not going to do it myself. That's just, that's trust. That's connectivity, the ability to come back, the lack of connectivity. I, I look, I think at times, you know, I've, I've experienced that in my career where, Maybe you're the better team. Maybe they're a more talented team. And there's some disconnect in a series. And you lose being up 15 in the third quarter, whatever it may be. This is just, I mean, it makes sense that the Heat are here in some ways. Yeah. It does make sense. Well, it does. When you compare them, I'm trying to think about their losses in these playoffs. I mean, they got, they got, their, they got blown out once in the Milwaukee series. The one game they lost. And then the Knicks series, they both those games were good games. We're down to the wire. And I'm trying to I'm sort of comparing them to Denver. It feels similar in a way. Um, just in terms of like, you know, you can lose. Things can other guys can go off, things can happen. But it does it like it felt it felt last night Boston losing the way they did was much more substantial than just losing that game at home. I mean, you don't want to be done three oh regardless, but it felt like they gave losing up. Losing a game on the road. But we'll you're lose. saying it's more substantial than losing game two. Well, I think, no, I think game two is more substantial. That's what I meant. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, but I'm saying to your point about not giving up the rope, I'm like, I think if, I think it's hard to have, you know, very much sort of positivity for Boston in general right now with the way they lost last night versus if they had lost on a, you know, Jimmy had taken over and they had right. lost by four at the end of the game or something like that. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I, I definitely agree with you. The, the, I would say this because Stan used to always talk about this and I tend to agree with him. There's plenty of examples throughout playoff history where somebody loses by 40 comes in a playoff back. game, comes back and wins a series. I think the issue with last night, it felt more like a trend than it did an outlier. 